right <clears throat> good evening everyone uh, it's seven o'clock and uh, I had wanted to use my other app but it's giving me problems so I'll just use the direct Facebook live um, so if you can hear me just comment hi you know you're welcome I'm yet to see those who have been able to join us okay so um this evening um i i want i put something on facebook and there was a lot of discussion on what's the way forward right so it's going to be a series uh, this is going to be one of uh, many series with respect to dealing with money all right money you know and uh, investing in our kids I think it's it's important that um, for those of us in Ghana, we we grew up uh, knowing that our fathers, our uncles had cocoa farms, and those cocoa farms were handed over to our parents' parents, and it came down to us. But now, um, it's 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 difficult, right, for us to have. Uh, I say that we we can have investment for our kids or let's say property um, property for our kids so what do we do for our kids and so this is something I've been learning over the past two three years and I feel like sharing you know I've, I've, I've started the journey and I think we can all do it together um, so today I'll be giving a, a preamble, an introductory to the concept. <clears throat> and if you read the description, it states that uh, investment um, for our kids. How do we invest for our kids? Um, I mean, my intention is to use 30 minutes every you know, Saturday evening, 7 p.m. So we discuss. As we move on, we'll be, people could you know, join in, share the ideas because me i don't have a cocoa farm i mean of course i know my uncle have i can easily get access but what can we give to our kids sorry i'm using english because i don't have a lot of international friends and i know my Ghanaian friends can also understand me so please uh, bear with me um so what can we do to make sure that our kids when they are at their ripe age when they are in the, at the university level they can also benefit right what can we do right what can we do uh philip okay let me see what philip um philip wants to join on the video i mean i'm okay with that um so <clears throat> what can we do to make sure our our kids can also get something when we leave. So before I dive into those things, I, I want us to understand certain things. That, okay, so I'm going to be recommending certain books. If you have time, you can read them. One of the powerful books I have come across is the All right, and so as we time on, I'll throw some insight, because that's where I'm learning from. And aside that, I'm learning from other Ghanaian entrepreneurs and other friends who, you know, have shared their experience. I always say this, um, but yo, I see you around. Uh, that's my my big my big brother, PC. Um, um, what can we do to make our kids also prosper? What can we do to help our kids? When I finish school, right? When I I finish school. I, I didn't have, uh, my dad didn't give me any money. But then to a certain extent, I also show appreciation to my dad because he introduced me to the concept of investment. So I'll share a little bit of my experience today and why I think we can do that for our kids. I'll come to that. So some of you are lucky, your parents may have cocoa farms. Yes, I mean, but I don't know how many of you are going to the cocoa farm, you know, give it time and the rest. But then, 
what our parents didn't know. When we come to know it, we should be able to share it, right? Or to develop it and help the next generation. And that's why I'm here. We should be able to help the next generation with the knowledge we are acquiring. And I think the best thing we can do for our kids is to invest one in their future to invest for them not for us so don't touch it right don't touch the money invest for your kids and it could be very little right um as five cities and you'll be surprised how much five cities could get you again i will take you to certain platforms and then we'll do the calculation together we'll see a live demonstration on We need to do it for our kids. We don't do it for ourselves. How many of us here would have been happy? Desmond, thank you for watching. How many of us here would have been happy that when we finish first degree, our parents gave us 5,000 as a seed money for us to start life? I don't think, a, a few people were fortunate to get that. Most of us didn't get that. Not because our parents were not uh, serious or and you get into group or after this series of presentation when you get to do it is your responsibility to ensure that by the time your kid finish first degree you are able to give your kid something to start life with and that's one thing i've learned from the jewish community. when you finish the same degree with a the, the jewish kid for instance in a student loan when you finish, you might have to pay in the loan. But the Jewish kid might never have. But the point is, when they would have had another money that has been handed over to them to start life with. So the two of you, you are never the same. You can never be the same. Because whilst you are going to start on zero, one, they have no loans to pay, two, they have a huge sum of money that has been given to them as a startup for their life. So you're not the same. You can never be the same. So by the time you struggle to get to where they were when you all started, they would have long gone. So they are 10 years ahead of you. We should do that for our kids. We should do. So we we'll, And it shouldn't be. A, but then all as we learn on, we should also put in mind that we need to teach our kids how to invest, how to save. See, once you have learned it, then now you can transfer the knowledge to your kids. I am sharing what I am learning. I am not there yet, but then I feel the little I've learned, I need to share it so that I'm not alone when I get there. Uh, for some of you who know, about three weeks today, I was involved in a disaster, which is my entire house that I was renting in Techiman Bunu East got bent down. Everything in my house got bent down. I lost everything. So I always tell people, as it stands now, I have no legal documents to prove that I'm married. I have no legal documents to prove that I'm going to school because I lost everything. I have no certificate, I have no transcript, everything lost. So technically, you would say I've come to square zero. But it was then that I realized that certain habits that I had developed is what would help me as I move on. And then the gift from friends, that came. But what if I had done something 10 years ago and this had happened and nobody could have... I think the help... But I appreciate what is going on now because the truth is, my house got burnt on January 8th. January 8th, Ubiya Kudibunya, but Ubiya Dinsika Niska Sa, Kakrana Kanode.
to sit down and think, what if it happened? I always say, if it. And ask several questions. How do you survive? And for me, I thank God for the kind of mentality He created in me. Else, I don't think I would have survived it. It's only God who has actually brought me this far. Because for the past three weeks, I've lived life as if nothing has happened. Right? Once in a while, you remember certain things, you're like, oh, it's bent. You know, you can't get, you have to date it again. But you know, because of the things I'm learning, I know that even though I'm in my mid 30s, I'm not. I am assured of the fact that I would have a better life than I even lost. We need to plan. The secret is this if you don't start, you never know what the experience is. All you have to do is to start and stop giving yourself excuses because those excuses we can all give. Today, when I went to church, I learned one thing we can always give excuse for not being at a place. We can But the truth is, if we don't do that thing, we can also never experience the feel of it. We would only hear people tell us stories of it. Which to me, it's not good. You know, it's not fine. We need to practically start something. It could be as little as five Ghana cities, 10 Ghana cities, 20 Ghana cities, 50 Ghana cities. You can do that for your children. This series is not for us. Of course, we, we can do something to benefit for us, but we need to do it for our children. This series is for our children. We need to do it for our children. So that when your child finish their bachelor's degree or the tertiary degree, most of my colleagues, our kids, maximum is 10 years. So I can speak to my colleagues and then those who are maybe ahead of me. All right. But then it's something we can all do. We can all invest towards the future of our kids, such that when our kids finish university, the tertiary level, they know they can start something. And we, their parents, We need to involve our kids in money for them to understand what money is. None of us went to school, and even those who went to school to do banking and finance, accounting, they should, nobody taught them how money works. They told they all they were only taught how how to make money. 
Nobody goes to school to learn how to make money. But funny enough, we all go to school because we want to finish school and get money. So when we went to school and they didn't teach us money, how then do we know how to make the money? So we are now put in a position of that old myth. Go to school, get good grades, and then live a good life. But then there are other things that we can add to make their life better. They don't tell us those things. Now, I'm, I'm hoping this series will teach someone a lesson on money. So this is the thing. In a, a Jewish home or in a Jewish practice, when a kid is given 10 shekels, so let's say 10 Ghana cities, $10. Dollars is what everybody knows. So when a, when a child is given $10, the family have created, or the father or mother have created five jars, five different jars. And I'll talk, I'll repeat this over and over throughout the presentation in the subsequent weeks. Five of the tenganas, which is one in it. That is for sight. There is a there is a myth. That people have that tithe was for the Jews. As far as I'm concerned, Abraham was not a Jew, but Abraham gave tithe. So me, I practice biblical concepts. That they have one for tithe. Then they, they will have another jar which will, will put another one tenth. So now two is good. One tenth for offering and giving. Offering and giving. So my dear Adventist friends who are listening, Adventists are known for giving their tithe and an offering. So I'm 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 trying to you know challenge your thought. So listen again. The first one, one over ten, or one CD goes to the first jar, which is tight, and that is one tenth of it. The second jar, right? The second jar would also take one. Right? So we have spent two on tight and offering and then giving then the third jar right would now be savings savings most of us here when we're growing up we're not taught savings we need to teach our kids saving i'll be talking more about it savings then the fourth jar would be to take two two seed two dollars or two ghana cities or two shekels that too is for investment. So when you look at it technically, so five out of the ten dollars the parents gave to the kid has been spent, but none of them came to hear himself. Then the rest of the five shekels or five dollars is for spending. So But today, what I want you to know is this. We can all save, invest in our children's future by one, teaching them skills that will help them as they grow up, right from infancy, right from six years. So class one, when they As a parent, that money is not yours. I'm sorry, you give birth, so what? It's not yours. Use that money to start an investment for your child. 
remember, it's not for you, it's for your child. When they get to where they have to start You would start planning. Thank you and have a wonderful Remember to leave your comment in in the comment section. Feel free to ask any questions, something you would wish us to discuss. And I believe we will go on this journey to help each other. Shalom, peace, and God bless you very much.